Are you thinking about buying or selling a home and wondering what the heck is happening in the market right now? Today, I'm going to bust the biggest housing market myths that we are seeing so that you know what you need to know to make a good decision in your real estate journey. Number one is I'll get a better deal once prices crash. Are prices really going to crash? Let's compare the market today in 2024 to the market then in 2008. I think that was the year my son was born, 16 years ago. What are we seeing here, guys? Let's look at inventory. I'm an economist, supply and demand, right? So the existing inventory of homes then was 10 months of homes. Now, nationally, it's four months of homes. In Seattle, it's about two or three months of homes. So there's not a lot of inventory sitting on the market waiting to get soaked up by buyers. Then we looked at newly built homes, new construction. Remember, I don't know if you guys remember, they were having all of these uh, pre-construction deals where you could make an offer on a home uh, before they broke ground. And then in nine months when it was done being built, you could have your contract and the home would have appreciated like $100,000. So you could resell that brand new home right away for $100,000 more. And they had buses of people driving around Florida uh, doing this with condos. Anyway, <laughs> there were a lot of new construction homes going on the market, uh, 1.6 million then, and now roughly only 1 million. We are behind on building new homes, according to the economists and statisticians. And foreclosures. I was trained as an investor to be out looking for foreclosures, negotiating with people that were heading into foreclosure, losing their home, writing them letters, putting out signs, you know, stop foreclosure now, the yellow signs by the side of the road, and negotiating with REO managers on the bank. None of that is a good way to get a house right now because there are very few foreclosures happening. We are sitting on record amounts of equity and anyone that has a lot of equity on their home, even if they get behind on payments, they can always sell and make a profit. They do not need to go into foreclosure. That's just silly. The next myth that buyers have is the worry that they're not going to be able to find any homes to buy. And for a while, for a minute in 2023, this was a really big deal in Seattle. We had very little inventory. People were locked in to their like two and three percent mortgage rates. They weren't going to buy anything else. They weren't going to move. Now we are seeing a change. Just in the last year, nationally, we have 36 percent more housing available. So this lockup effect is starting to loosen up. Interest rates are starting to come down. Buyers are out. People don't want to be in their same COVID house forever, right? They're ready to move on. So we're seeing more homes hitting the market. It's still low. It's not as high as it was pre-pandemic. It's about 28% less. So there's not a flood of homes on the market, but there are more and more homes coming available and you should be able to find something now, even if you were out a year ago or even six months ago, and we're struggling to find that right home in the right price. Myth number three, I have to wait until I've saved 20% down. Honey, if you live in Seattle and you are trying to save 20% down on your home, not only is it gonna take you a while, but by the time you have that 20% number, the price of the house is gonna go up and you're not that's not gonna do it for you anymore. <laughs> you're gonna lose buying power in many cases because the market moves up faster than your savings do. So you always feel like you're in this chase. I really advise people to get a foot in the door with something they can afford. And hopefully this little tip will help you because according to Fannie Mae, 90% of consumers don't know the minimum required down payment for a typical mortgage. If you're getting a FHA mortgage, you can get like 3% down. So you do not need to have a lot of cash necessarily. If you have a VA loan, if you've been in the military, you can get a 0% down mortgage. So there are a lot of options out there, but I would say most of my clients are going conventional and they are putting 5% down or more. So if you have 5% down payment, you do not need to keep saving for that 20% down. The time that you waste saving for that could definitely cost you money and lost appreciation with the growth that Seattle typically has in its real estate market. If you wanna look at this chart, what it tells you is that first time home buyers typically get a 6% down on average. So a lot of them are going with five and it's only the repeat home buyers who have enough cash to put 20% down. So they're going with 15 or 20% down. So if you're a first time home buyer, plan for closer to five and let's get you going. Let's get you finding something that you can afford now, moving into and riding that appreciation train all the way to the top, baby.